So do you think off the back of the pandemic, there's very specific um, things that people would care about um, that, that Derek's mentioned, that Yodit's mentioned there. But I, I'm just wondering generally about employee expectation and how that's changed. Because, you know, if we we're going to start looking at some of the practical things that's come up, one of the things I kind of hypothesized in, in some other work that I did is that the dynamics of the power equation between employees and employers has kind of shifted slightly, particularly when it comes to workplaces, because up until up until the pandemic, you know, I think, again, IWFM data shows about 60% of people were going to do five days a week in the office, fairly standard. That's now looking like 30%. We're now saying, look, flexibility is, is the key to all this. So now we've got to work harder to try and attract people in if that's in, you know, indeed what we want to do. And there's a question mark over that. It's not necessarily what we want to do. But uh, just, Patrick, your thoughts on some of the things that Derek and Yoda have said around that kind of it employee awareness about some of these factors but also the expectation and and whether or not you think that's going to see a shift in how organizations view their responsibility for the the environments that they provide people both within the corporate space and outside of it so that's a massive long question with lots well, of points a, and i'll try and break it down a little bit if i can chris so so just just on on the subject of of data what one of the things we had to do very early on particularly for those who were coming into our admin buildings was to reassure those who were coming in that the buildings were set up safely. Um, so, so from a data perspective, we very, very quickly deconstructed our buildings down to various spaces and floors. We, we calculated where, what COVID safe distances would be for people who were working. We blocked up all, all, blocked off all of the other desks. And then to manage demand coming in through the front door, we built a bit of a Heath Robinson desk booking system until we could go out to market and actually um, um, buy the one that we're now we're now using, and and we we put limits on our buildings. So um, one of our buildings in Swindon pre-pandemic would have had a capacity, well actually an occupancy of about four thousand two hundred a day on average. Um, we maximised the uh, capacity to just over a thousand. And in fact, we had about 300 people in. That number's up to about 600 today. So we had a desk booking system and that desk booking system then allowed us to feed off that to manage some of the other things like sizing services and, and that sort of thing. Um, and what, what, we, what we introduced then over the last few months was larger groups coming in and groups of people coming in and doing a whole series of experiments to understand whether the space that we're providing for them is fit for purpose. So should we should we create more flexible space? Should we create more collaboration space? And indeed, what, what does that look like? Pre-pandemic, pre if you came into Nationwide House, you would have seen like lots of buildings, I guess, apart from Google and the likes, you would have seen lots and lots of desks. Even in Google, actually, if you go behind that door, behind reception, yeah. lots of desks. But um, <laughs> so lots of desks, lots of collaboration space, and some meeting rooms. If you go into Nationwide House today, it will be different. You'll see more collaboration space, more social space. And I suspect in 12 months when you go in, it'll be even more. Um, and what we've, what we've created is this sense of, we call it imaginatively team talk, where we're just constantly getting feedback, constantly getting an understanding of what people want to use the space for. And we're responding to that. Um, and and building new space. So data is incredibly